I'm waiting to see who accepts it now. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll share the links to you too, so you can, you know, find it. Okay. Oh, when you get a chance, can you send me the link to the co-op's um, anniversary video? Yeah. It. Okay. Okay. Twitch has accepted the stream. Okay. YouTube has accepted the stream. Facebook has accepted the stream. Okay. You got your timer set to, I think you set it to 55 minutes, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Just tell me when to start. Okay, so what I want you to do then is when you're ready to go on the air, clap your hands in front of your microphone and you're on the air. Hello and welcome. You are now listening to Talking Peace with the Western New York Peace Center. I am your host, Deidre Email, Executive Director of the Western New York Peace Center. And today we have a, a wonderful guest, Jennifer White from the Lexington Co-op. Uh, she's our marketing and communications manager of the Lexington Co-op, uh, which, you know, is going to, we're going to just discuss about, you know, the importance of co-ops and affordable food, fresh affordable food and local foods and um, what the co-op is doing um, right now to help make that happen. Um, so before we get started, we always love to give thanks um, in the indigenous and, um, and African traditions um, North American traditions, uh, indigenous traditions, to just give thanks for the earth, to give thanks for uh, the fowl in the air, the fish in the sea, the animals. And I love to give thanks for the love, pure love and um, charity people um, can have and does do have towards one another. And when we see that, let's praise it, let's lift it up. Um, let's give honor to whom is due and um, just let love and justice just abound coming from our hearts and, um, and into our communities, into our homes. And uh, so we just give thanks for, you know, for the sun, you know, the sun was beautiful today, the air was crisp, and uh, we give thanks for the clouds, we give thanks for uh, just the universe, everything in its uh, rightful place, um, everything in its order. Um, and so uh, we say uh, now way after we give thanks and the people will say no um, in our uh, Seneca indigenous brothers and sisters tradition. So uh, thank you, Jen, for uh, sharing uh, with thank us today. You. Welcome. Thank you. That was so beautiful. That <laughs> allowed me to take some deep breaths and center myself. Yeah. And yeah, I really appreciate the mindfulness and presence that that you're bringing to this discussion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You know, we had to. You know, we have to do that. Mm -hmm. Um. Because you know, we're still going. You know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a long day. We still are. You know, pushing forward. Um, but we have to take that time and, uh, I appreciate, you know, just touching, you know, basically like touching the earth and connecting, mm -hmm. um, know. our connection to nature, Yes, our connection yes. to everything, you know, I, yes. I agree. <laughs> Most definitely. So, um, what values do you want to bring to our conversation today? Um, you know, with the whole idea of co-ops and, and or cooperatives, um, what values you want, you want for people to remember? I think values that I want people to remember are the the first thing that's coming up in my mind is community. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's that's one reason why I came to the co-op because I wanted to help build that sense of community and you know, concern for community is one of uh, the principles that not only Lex Lexington Co-op, but co-ops everywhere are founded on. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really important to me. I'm, I feel very involved in our community. I've, um, you know, I've, I've, I've started, an, I've co-founded a nonprofit and I, I do a lot of volunteer work and I'm doing a lot of work currently to bring more of those community connections uh, mm -hmm. to the co-op, you know, with our with our staff, with our board, with our owners, with our partners, with our vendors, with our farmers. Um, so community is really important to me. Uh, and then, you know, kind of in that same sense uh, is, you know, the, the power of, of localism. Uh, you know, local businesses, local, local farmers supporting our local economy, supporting our neighbors. You know, when we make choices uh, economically that support the people around us, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's powerful. You yes, know, yes. we're supporting our neighbor's livelihood. And, you know, that's, that's, that's a cycle that, you know, all helps us live a better quality of life. We're all supporting each other. We're the city of good neighbors. Right. Um, so, and then, you know, another, I would say a third value would be um, healthy and nutritious eating and access to uh, fresh, healthy, local foods mm -hmm. is really important to me. That's a value I like to, you know, live by in my life. I, I feel better when I'm eating fresh, you know, mm -hmm. produce. Uh, I feel, you know, it's full of nutrients. It, it brings me back to how we just started the conversation and our connection to the earth, our connection to the world, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it. I think, you know, one of the things that I, I'm striving for at the co-op is, uh, along with my team and, and, is, and our community and our owners, is to help build a stronger, more equitable local food system where accessing food is you know, something that is easier, something that, you know, people don't have to just survive on, you know, what is available to them. You know, I want to hopefully increase access to foods and get healthier foods on people's tables. And that's right. one of the things we'll talk about with the Double Up Food Bucks program today too. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> most definitely, you know, ditto. Um <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, community is essential uh, to me. Mm -hmm. um, and when when there isn't community, community can be created through mutual needs um, and uh, and and mutual um, ways to give of what we you know of what we have and and to to support you know. So you know, I want to I want to bring the values of support of um affordability and um uh communication i would say mm -hmm. and education because i think that you know the first things you know sometimes when, when we're not educated on how things work and um how things kind of come to be uh, we just see what's on the surface and we, you know, we get frustrated or we get aggravated and we say, this isn't working or no one cares about us. But when we start to understand, you know, economy, when we start to understand, you know, some you know, politics and different things like that. Um, then we begin to understand the larger cycle, you know, of, uh, uh, of things in, um, and hopefully with understanding, then we can be empowered to start to change things for the better. So I think education is extremely important and um, sharing the, you know, information, of course, um, mm -hmm. uh, that communications piece um, to me is extremely important when it comes to, to co-ops and why, you know, they're important. So therefore we're doing what we're doing. You right. know, we are attempting to share this information um, uh, uh, via, you know, Twitch and YouTube and radio waves and Facebook. And um, so, and hopefully you can go into your local co-op and say, you know, why should I join the co-op? You know, what are the benefits? 
Uh, every time I ask, when I when I go through the line at the co-op and I, you know, hear the um, cashier ask, are you a member? I want to, and they say, oh, no, I'm not a member. Mm-hmm. I want to turn around and just like, you should become a member. Why? You know, why? A member? Yeah. <laughs> you know like have these, you know, five reasons, right. why, you know, kind of thing. But I'm just like, no, mind your business. <laughs> I have that <laughs> sometimes. But um, I just like, you know, uh, mind your business and, um, but, you know, just encourage people, you know, why they should um, be, you know, a part owner. So, mm-hmm. um, so going back to you and your experience. Um, so, well, going back to what is a co-op, can you share uh, with us um, your understanding of what, you know, a cooperative, a food cooperative is in this instance, um, the type of co-op uh, that Lexington Co-op is? Um, right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so I'll just preface this with I am, I've been at the co-op for a year. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm still learning co-op culture. Um, but, you know, it's, I, I learned that it, it really is about community. Um, and it's about economic participation, uh, democratic member control. Mm-hmm. It's about education training and information and sharing uh, consumer issues. Uh, it's about having concern for community. Um, the, what, what I'm kind of listing right now are the principles that all uh, co-ops everywhere are governed by. Mm-hmm. And there are multiple different types of co-ops. Uh, the Lexington co-op is a consumer co-op, meaning mm-hmm. uh, each member owner has a stake in the organization. Uh, you pay a one-time $80 investment and you are a part owner of the co-op. Um, you can pay that off one time. You can pay that off in increments of $20 uh, over the course of a year. And in profitable years, our member owners receive patronage dividends. Mm-hmm. Um, I have received before. <laughs> Yes, let's Not go. every year, but I have. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, mem- member owners vote on board members and, you know, just uh, also have access to uh, owner deals throughout mm-hmm. the store. And we have, you know, hundreds of products on owner deals uh, every month. Mm-hmm. And um, we're constantly looking to, you know, expand the benefits of ownership and, um and offer engagement opportunities, educational opportunities. Uh, so for example, right now we have a, uh, a winter cooking class series that we're partnering uh, with a Massachusetts Avenue project. Uh, with. Yeah, it's really fun. Um, they have a commercial kitchen uh, in their building mm-hmm. and uh, their kitchen manager, Bethany, she's fantastic. Yes. Um, we've done uh, kimchi classes. Uh, we did a kimchi class. Um, I wish I, I wish I, you know, I've been wanting yeah. to do it. I told them like, you should do it. And they was like, okay. And um, then I missed it. <laughs> so fun. So yeah. fun. We have such a great time. Uh, yeah, we learn so much food preservation is, you know, a really great tool to mm-hmm. save money right now. I know that we're talking mm-hmm. about ways that we can save. Um, so yeah, food preservation, uh, class, um, we we do we're, there was a there's a uh, the next one coming up is a um a, is a, a galette make and take uh which is a pastry okay. and we we just did a cornbread and a sukuma wiki a food from the African diaspora wow uh, okay. yes uh, so cultural cooking classes and this is something that um is offered to owners as a benefit. Mm. Uh, so things like this, we're, uh, looking to expand these types of benefits more to owners. Mm-hmm. Um, is uh, there a cost for, uh, non-owners or is there a general like community fee, you know, for the community? Yeah, we, we also do classes in the store at our hurdle cafe that are open to all community mm-hmm. members. Okay. Yeah. These are, these are pretty affordable. Um, we have a, an amazing, uh, bakehouse staff that are just like I, I like to call them world-class uh, bakers because they are, I mean if you've ever had our pie 
mm-hmm. or you know any of our baked goods yeah, they are food. they're top notch <laughs> i mean you can't get these types of like scratch made mm-hmm. goods with yeah. local organic fresh made ingredients anywhere else i mean mm-hmm. this, this is you know home cooking at its finest um so yeah we we've done uh Ba- uh, baking classes, pie classes in in, in the store. Um, and uh, we did a Christmas cookie ma- decorating class with kids uh, over the winter. Um, so yeah, we, we're, we're, we're expanding those kinds of opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, most mostly, I think it's it's re- it is really a feeling too. you know when you when you shop at the co-op, it's yeah. one of the benefits that I hear a lot of people sharing is uh, it just feels good, you know. Um, uh, we have a, an incredibly friendly and passionate staff who are really educated on the products mm-hmm. and the farmers and the business owners that we partner with. Yeah. Um, people, yeah, we have a staff that really cares. Um, and I talk to them often. <laughs> good, good. At least at the, <laughs> at, least at the, uh, the uh, Elmwood location. I yeah. do uh, let them know what, what I think, my all my two cents without writing we, it down on the two cents board. <laughs> we appreciate it. We love feedback. We And, you know, yeah. that's another benefit. You know, you can speak directly to us, give us your feedback. You know, we mm-hmm. ultimately a co-op serves the, the needs of the community. We exist right. to serve the, the people in our community. So, um, you know, when, when you have a stake uh, in that, then you have more economic power and more um, power in your community. And I think that's that's why I feel I can be more vocal because mm-hmm. I'm like, I know how much I support this store. And I know, you know, I'm a, you know, part owner and mm-hmm. I might not be on the board right now or I might, you know, but I right know, now. you know, <laughs> right now, but yeah. my voice should count, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, because we are invested um, our family has been invested into the Lexington, Lexington Co-op since 2000. Wow. Something like that for at least 20 years. And there are many others that is over 20 years since mm-hmm. its inception have been members yeah. and supporters. And um, I just want to say uh, with cooperatives, um, like you said, it's many different kinds. We are a consumer co-op. Mm-hmm. Um and, uh, you know, and it, it, there's, you know, there's different, there's pros and cons to it all. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the main things for the creation of the cooperative um, was as far as the food cooperative or consumer um, mm-hmm. cooperative in this instance, especially in the 60s and 70s, was having access to mm-hmm. um, organic uh, right. foods at an, at affordable prices. So, you know, you started with these buyers clubs um, that in, in, in really before the 60s and 70s, there have been um, mutual aid networks and even black cooperatives in the city of Buffalo um, in the early 30s and 40s. Um, so co-op, co-ops in Buffalo in particular have been around for a very long time. Um, but it's all about the people support because if you don't have the people support, you know, mm-hmm. it, you know, falls apart. And, um, but basically, you know, that's what I really loved about the co-op and, um, you know, or the idea, you know, of the co-op about, you know, uh, making, you know, creating access uh, to, a, to fresh, organic, you know, local foods and, you um, so I, I'll tell you this, um, just to give you a little history. Okay. <laughs> um, I probably heard this when Lexington Co-op was on Lexington Avenue in Buffalo. So, you know, that's where, you know, generally where it got, got its name. Um, you know, because it was so small, basically, uh, and when, you, when you're a buyer's club, this is how you can um, save monies, what have you. So the buyer's club turned into a store because when you have access foods, so let me go back. So mm-hmm. a buyer's club, you basically buy in bulk together. So you've right. got five families, you know, we can get cases of cereal and cases of, you know, bananas, oh, and right. cases, mm-hmm. you know, and divide amongst the families and, and you save your money by buying bulk, you know, basically, right? right. Um, 
And then you also start to save because you could work in the co-op uh, for an additional percentage off of your groceries. Um, and then uh, the other, you know, part, you know, was having like bulk grains and um, mm -hmm. seasonings and those things that's like kind of weekly having those accessible, you know, in the store instead of, you know, all this, you know, prepackaged things that are higher priced because of the packaging and that kind of thing. So like staple foods, um, mm -hmm. so your beans and your grains and stuff like that. Um, so I really appreciate that you could have, you could work you know, for a percentage off, you know, of your groceries, you, um, you already got a percentage off just being a member. So now it becomes, you know, affordable, you know, you might not grow everything, but you can at least, you know, purchase together, um, and invest in something that you can, you know, um, be supported that your family can be supported, you know, as well. Um, so I, I really enjoyed that. I remember seeing it grow from there you know, to Elmwood. And um, again, there's pros and cons, not getting into the weeds, sure. but, um, but I understand too, as far as the, you know, the market and, you know, why Elmwood and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and what I like is that even though we can't do what we used to do as members, I still, when I walk in there and I see the carts all over the place, I say, you know, you know, I'm a member, I want to see my co-op, you know, organized, or we need uh, disinfectant wipes, you know, like, I when I walk in there, I feel like, yes, I am part owner, <laughs> and I want to see certain things <laughs> done around. Um, I don't think anybody would stop you if you wanted to do that, Deidre. <laughs> I know, it's like, they know my name over the phone, it's so funny. Oh, yeah, you know, we got that, Deidre. I'm like, how do you know it's me? Oh, I know your voice, you know. <laughs> So, uh, so you can bring in the cards yeah you uh, can let them down, <laughs> the down. Yeah. you know um, so you know it's so funny but that's I think that that's why I love it because I do know mm -hmm. um, it becomes a, a a community within itself you know mm -hmm. of course you got like the Elmwood Village community space and mm -hmm. you know you have different uh uh, what do you call it, like sub-community, you know, different other communities that come into that space and you just, you meet each other in the co-op and you say hello and you say, how how's the family? Right. And everybody generally is connected or knows the other. And that's what I truly love, you know, love, love, love about having that local space, that meeting space, you right. know, of ideas or not, you know, controvert, you know, <laughs> Oh, let's, you know, uh, uh, go back and forth, but let's have it over pastries and, you know, and coffee from the car. All, all around food. Yeah. We all need to eat. We all right? need to eat, you know, yeah. um, but you know, that's what I really love about it. And, um, and so looking at, uh, double, tell me more about the double up your, your bucks double. program. Yes. I, I really, I really like this. Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, double up food bucks. Um, well, first of all, I just want to speak to the community aspect that you talked about, you know, being in the store just really quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, you're on the sales floor and I, I, you're, you do, you run into everybody, you know, you mm -hmm. just, um, and that's, that is a great feeling, um, that, you, you know, it's like everybody knows your name kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and we're, we are working to expand that type of feeling to more and more communities, whether or not, um, you know, your work, we, you know, we've switched from worker co-op to mm -hmm. uh, consumer co-op, but uh, nonetheless, uh, the <laughs> Double Up Food Bucks program yeah. is something that we, uh, the co-op has started in 2020 working with a partner organization called Field and Fork Network. Okay. Uh, the Lexington Co-op was one of the first, I think the, uh, the first grocery store in New York State actually to uh, operate the program. Um, first retail location. So it, it started most mostly in uh, farmer's markets. Okay. And uh, in, in 2020, um, 
we started at, at both co-ops and how it works is uh, SNAP participants uh, can receive uh, access to uh, more fruits and vegetables for free. Um, so it extends their food budget and uh, it's eligible on, you know, fresh, the focus is on fresh produce yeah. and look, and we have uh, an abundant local produce in season at the, at the co-op. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we are promoting right now a, a relaunch of the campaign of, of the program. Um, in, in 2020, we, uh, since 2020, mm -hmm. um, to now double, um, the double up food bucks program has been so successful. It's, uh, increased access for so many people. We've had, uh, sales to snap participants have doubled at the mm -hmm. co-op since the program started. Right. Um, we've had 1,400 participants uh, wow. total enrolled in the program um, who've saved a collective $100,000 wow. on local produce. Yes. Um, so it's it's really incredible. It's something that everyone at the co-op is really passionate about. Mm -hmm. And um, for the past couple of months, we've been working to educate uh, our our double up buck participants on a change to the program um, mm -hmm. to be in more uniformity with how the rest of the uh, program operates at mm -hmm. other locations. Um, so switching from um, basically a, a straight 50% off discount, uh, mm -hmm. which is capped at up to $10 per day, it's now operating under an earn and redeem model um, but the cap is extended to earn up to $20 per day. Okay. And some of the benefits of that are uh, par participants can have more autonomy and more flexibility over their budget. So, you know, kind of one thing that, it, that it, we understand about SNAP usage is, um, you know, you might run out by the end of the month, yeah. right? Yes, um, more, more likely. Right. You know, yeah. So the autonomy in this program is that you can choose how much you use and you can choose when you use it. So, you know, say it's the beginning of the month um, and, you know, you have um, uh, what you need for now. You know, you're going to need it more at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So you can just say, I'm OK, I'm not choosing to use any of my double up bucks right now. I'm going to wait. I'm going to save it towards the end of the month. And you know when your when your benefits run out, you can you know you can choose to use your entire balance. You can choose to use only a portion of your balance. You know you can choose whatever you need. Uh, so, so let me let me make sure I, I'm I, I'm understanding it clear. So mm -hmm. before, so each each SNAP participant has a certain amount of um, double up your bucks monies um, or a budget each month already is that how it works and then they can use so much of that per day or use so much of that per month uh sort of i think okay. let me so the way the program worked previously is you you have to use your uh ebt card mm -hmm. to to purchase mm -hmm. uh the produce um but you could get uh fifty percent off up to ten dollars per day. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, and the benefit now is that you don't need to use your EBT card on purchases. So okay. if you run out of if you run out of your EBT benefits, you can still use your uh, double up food bucks balance, uh, which you earn by buying produce. Uh, oh. so you use your snap card, say you, say, say you buy $5, you, you come into the store, you, you buy some bananas, you buy some lettuce, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you get what you need and mm -hmm. say you spend $5 on produce that day. Mm -hmm. You, by spending that $5, you earn $5 that goes into your double up food box balance oh. that you can use on your next visit. That's wonderful. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So um, on that time, let's use that $5 example. Mm -hmm. When you 
uh, you know, purchase like $5 worth of food there, can basically you get another $5 worth that day? Basically, that's the double, like, you know, getting yes. the person off. So instead of one bunch of bananas, I can get two bunches mm -hmm. of bananas for this for the price of one. You can't earn that. You can't earn, uh, redeem those on the same day. Okay. Okay. That's the change. That is the change. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cause I used to like, you know, promote it and stuff and, you know, like, so people will get, you mm -hmm. know, double, you know, you know, basically, you know, one, you know, two for the price of one type of thing. Right. So right. now they can't redeem it that day, but that they day. redeem it near the end of the month where they have accumulated so many. Correct. Months. Okay. Yeah. So that is, yeah. And that is the change that we are, you know, working to educate people on. There is yes. a lot of, there are a lot of questions. There's a lot of, a little bit of confusion mm -hmm. that um, we're working through right now. Cause with, with change, change is always hard. no matter right. what. But, <laughs> right. But I, I, I like the idea. And like you said, when people run out, cause I know, mm -hmm. you know, so many families that will run out um, and, and elderly will run out of food, you know, food stands, mm -hmm. run out of snap um, near the end of the month. And they, you know, they go to the pantries and, you know, you know, we figure out how to, you know, how to, um, you know, support, you know, support them. And, um, but knowing that you have a credit, like, right. oh, I have $20 worth of credit at, you know, the co-op for my, you know, for, for greens and, you know, right. and that kind of thing. I can just go there and say, hey, how much is on my credit and just get what I need. You know, right. um, so I think that's awesome. You know, yes. um, thank you. Uh, it's, a, well, it's a good supplement. We're and uh, to to help with this transition right now. Um, we've uh, uh, we've worked to have some even greater value on our uh, produce department right now. Okay. Um, you know, we work uh, we work with a local distributor who. Uh, is passionate about the program too, who's working with us on uh, costs and mm -hmm. reducing them even further. So Great. we're, so we, we know that it's, it can be a change that might be a little bit difficult at first, especially if you can't, you know, redeem some of those on the mm -hmm. same day. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, for, for the entire month of February, um, we're extending those uh, produce deals even further. Um, so people are, stretching their food budgets and, and experiencing a little bit more value. Mm -hmm. So how are you getting the word out um, mm -hmm. other than our radio show? <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a great opportunity so yeah. far. So I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. No um, uh, I would say um, the past couple months have been really focused on uh, current participants mm -hmm. and uh, just educating that it's going to change and that it has changed and getting everyone re-enrolled into the program. So that is one important thing. Everyone has to re-enroll uh, by way of going to our website, lexington.coop, so lexington.coop, and just filling out a quick survey with your information so we can get everyone into our system. Um, uh, so the past couple of months have been um, really focused on that. And, you know, if anybody needs help with that in the store uh, at the register, you know, we have a way to do that right in the store too. Um, uh, and as far as, you know, expanding awareness, yes. um, we're, we're, we're partner, we have a lot of partners and um, we are, we are uh, working to get the word out on a more strategic strategy uh, as we move forward throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, we learned from Field and Fork that there's 200,000 people on uh, SNAP uh, in Western New York throughout mm -hmm. all the counties, and that there's only 29,000 people enrolled in the Double Up Food Bucks program. Okay. So, you know, we know that there are, is a huge opportunity to get the word out more and more. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because this is just 
to, it, it really is a great program that people need to know about. So, um, you know, some of the things that we want to do is continue to collaborate with some of our community partners, like, um, like I mentioned, uh, MAP, Mass, mm. Massachusetts Avenue Project earlier, you know, they have, they have a mobile market program, um, which is essentially a farmer's market on wheels that mm -hmm. um, accepts, accepts double up food bucks. Okay. Uh, uh, so, you know, if you go to their website and you can look out for where their truck is going to be, um, you know, that's, that's one way uh, we want to work together with them to get the word out that uh, you can access these benefits, the co-op too, you know, one mm -hmm. important um, piece of information is that while the, the double up food bucks program field and fork is working to expand uh, where it operates, Mm -hmm. Right now, it, it is mostly available at um, uh, in the season at these kinds of mobile markets and at farmers markets, which mm -hmm. are not available in the winter. So, mm -hmm. Lexington Co-op is one of the only places that you can have that continuous access throughout the I was winter. I going to ask you that, yeah, um, where you know all can you know people go to get this benefit? Right. Um, how can uh, what what do the your organization, such as let's say the African Heritage Food Co-op, or um, or even let's say the corner store, um, what do they have to do in order to be able to provide um, the same program? And it, and and is the uh, Lesson Co-op uh, willing and able to, you know, help get get it in other places? Oh, absolutely. I I mean our. Our mission and vision are based on principles of building a strong local food system, mm -hmm. you know, uh, collaborating with our community, supporting other cooperatives, supporting our local businesses. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever that looks like, you know, I think working with our key partners and collaboration is going to be necessary. Um, you know, I'm, I, I'm meeting with somebody from a um, friend of mine from Feedmore, Western New York, um, yes. about working together with um, their SNAP outreach coordinators to get the word out more. Mm -hmm. um, we, at African Heritage Food Co-op is another great organization um, that we want to support that we, I mean, I, I was at, we actually had a staff retreat today. Um, mm -hmm at the exchange at Beverly Gray. Yes. Uh, where uh, African Heritage has a space out of. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's there's just so much opportunity for collaboration. There's a lot of great organizations working together on, on the same things. Right. Um, so I think the co-op as an institution has always been, um, I think, impactful in helping sharing those resources helping kind of make connections in the community, mm -hmm. um, helping incubate a lot of small and local businesses. And, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so I guess um, long story short, you know, the answer is that we are willing to do whatever it takes to help build yeah. a strong local food system. Yeah. So. yeah, I think that, you know, just seeing that program and so in so many other places, um, you know, is the key. And of course, you know, yeah. you want to come to the you know listen support and i would say that um many people on the budget would not consider the uh listen co-op right away um because the prices are not like let's say a tops you know tops prices or what have you um but when we're looking at local organic um some you know mm -hmm. items being organic um uh i compare prices um at least three, three or four stores, you know, and usually on the fresh food area, the top will be top for me, um, especially with our greens and the and the uh, the produce quality is uh, better than some than uh, other. Mm -hmm. um, again, I really appreciate you know that um, you know. Uh, the farm rail that you work with and um what i what ha what what you used for the pandemic um was have locals come in and have like small tables 
to, you know, to talk about their produce or talk their local cheeses and so on and do sampling. And I would love to see that because I think that helps to promote their from their businesses as well as you know letting right. people kind of see how they can put you know th- these foods together um that's the other part too even if everything is so available and so affordable you know does it get eat you know do people buy enough food to really, um help you know their health and um support families and i would say no <laughs> just in general, I think a big part is, you know, how do I use it? You know, how do we um, consume it? You know, is it, um, how do you make it tasty? You know, Great. so, go, you know, going back to the classes you were taught, mm-hmm. I read uh, Bill, uh, they have a health options, uh, sir, where they have a, like a, a uh a kitchen um you know just place that that their recipe how to utilize fresh food is so important agreed um Mm -hmm. you're starting to break up for me a little bit i'm not sure yeah that's okay no but i got the gist of what you're saying i mean Mm -hmm. it's not just about access to fresh food it's it's you know how do i prepare it that it tastes good how do i make sure and preserve it. I mean, because how many yeah. times have all of us had a fridge full of vegetables that, you know, don't oh, last and yeah, that, that just go to waste, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I had, uh, I had, I had a fresh, a uh, big, huge hat of red cabbage over the weekend that, you know, I'm like, what am I going to do with this huge head of red cabbage? You mm-hmm. know, a lot of times I just let it sit there until it, goes bad and then, then <laughs> got it's garbage or you compost it you know but i can i should have made sauerkraut <laughs> i know exactly well that's how i was trying to make that <laughs> right but like it, and that's what i'm really excited about is uh, you know the education piece of it too mm-hmm. um you know that's something it's been a rough few years at the co-op since the pandemic i think it's been mm-hmm. a rough few years for everyone um mm-hmm. but uh it we we feel the tide is changing a little bit. We're kind of getting back more to our roots. You know, we have um, really ambitious and knowledgeable uh, dietitians that work at both co- at both of our stores now that we are oh, wow. bringing, that we are bringing back uh, doing nutrition tabling and um, mm-hmm. this is so this is all part of you know the strong local food system. You know um, that that's great meal meal prep meal. Uh, food preservation, you know, and, mm-hmm. and stretching your food budget that way. You know, if you, if you take yes. all of your produce home and process it up and you're more likely to use it then too, you know, mm-hmm. if I, I chop up all my cabbage and then I, um, I, I preserve it with vinegar and now mm-hmm. it's ready and, and it'll be good in the fridge for months, you know, right, or right. I bring home my lettuce and, um, you know, chop off the bottom of it and, and put it in water, you know, it's yeah, a plant. Through it. so you're right. It, <laughs> I think that's so awesome to see that you know oh, I got new leaves and I can just keep you know right off of it and you know have fresh and people can do that in the winter right now you know I think that is so cool and have you know like you said having that um that information uh we do I do another uh radio show I co-host a, another radio show um with uh Gail Wales and Della Miller on, oh great oh yeah. that's beautiful yeah 96.5 and it's called growing health and you know we talk about you know more so on the gardening end of things mm-hmm. um and how you know different vegetables and fruits and herbs and so on benefit the body and how it also benefits the earth and you know and we talk about um uh not you know gardening but also agriculture mm-hmm. also what's going on you know with um uh, uh, indigenous and, um, uh, you know, people of color owning land and, and yes. having access to the land, um, to grow our own, you know, foods and so on. So, uh, you know, that's, well, that's one of the things we talked about basically yeah. was how to, you know, stretch that, that, that fruit and, you know, vegetables that you already get, you know, how you can regrow them, 
you know, right. just from what you already purchased and you can, you know, how do you preserve that seed, um, you know, for, for your growing season um, or putting the plant right back in the earth, uh, putting your lettuce back in and saying, okay, you know, right. <laughs> you growing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, this is crazy because, well, this is the second time uh, Gail Wells has been brought up in a conversation today. So I think this is a message from the universe that yes. I need to meet Gail Wells. Yes, you do. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, and she's, awesome. she's the co- she's the founder of Freedom Gardens. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. I've heard, I've heard. Um, mm-hmm. I need Gail. Are you listening? I need to meet <laughs> um, but that, but also what you were talking with with access to land. Also, um, we met with uh, Allison from uh, Urban Fruits and Veggies today. Dahoney, yes. Oh, Dahoney from Urban Fruits and Veggies today. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was just an amazingly uh, eye-opening conversation about, uh, you know, the policy, the policies that exist that need to change in order to grant more access to land, uh, especially er er for urban farmers and especially for BIPOC urban farmers right here locally. Right here Um, locally. Yeah. Um, So that's something that myself and we, all of us at the co-op are learning more about today through mm-hmm. help from Allison mm-hmm. and you know and you know like what you were saying earlier um, growing your own food you know this is mm-hmm. this is another way that we can all stretch our food budgets and have more of a connection to the the food that we consume yeah. um, I mean that is that's to me that's holistic health mm-hmm. um, and that's actually another um, eligible item in the Double Up Food Bucks program is um, seeds for planting. Oh, that's so. wonderful. I was going <laughs> to ask you that because right. I know some seeds are, you know, in, for SNAP, you know, you can buy, you know, certain seeds. Um, yes. But I was wondering with that, if you can buy seeds. And I think that's, you know, like I said, I really support this program. Um, I want to see it grow. Uh, it's It's about time. Yeah. Um, I know, I know there was always something available, you know, during the summer for, you know, farmer's markets and it was kind of like right. a separate thing, but, um, but now, you know, kind of being able to do that during, you know, the winter and, you know, in store right, um, and the seeds and I believe even the plants, right. If a tomato plant or like starter plants, is that also um, available on that double up your bucks as well? A- any plants that bear fruit is what is eligible. Wow. Yeah. You hear that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. yeah. And we want to get the word out more. So, you know, it's uh, something that we're kind of putting all the pieces into play right now. We're connecting with partners. You know, if there's anybody mm-hmm. listening right now that wants to help um, be a partner in this program, you know, like I said, we're, we have partnerships with MAP and, and Feed More mm-hmm. and, you know, even Big Big Table, which is a, a pays yeah. you community cafe devoted to, you know, um, destigmifying hunger uh, on the West side. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of partners that we want to bring together uh, uh, because there's, a, like I said, there's just a need to grow awareness for this program. So we'll be out in the community this summer, yeah. tabling at different events. Really um, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's great. You know, even though the Peace Center, you know, we don't sell food or anything, mm-hmm. um, but we do support and understand how food and people don't always connect these two together um, with, you know, with hunger and war, you mm-hmm. know, and food accessibility and violence. Um, and sometimes violence and war happen because of the lack of accessibility of the, you know, of people's needs, whether it's food, shelter, you know, clothing, um, and, you know, injustice in the government and some, and, and many times, which is almost every time in war, the access to food becomes, um, non-existent, you know, and, uh, you know, just the basics, uh, uh, you know, war affects, you know, the land, um, you know, deteriorate, um, chemicals and so on can deteriorate the land um and uh and having people uh and 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 cut people off from you know their local farmers and stores and you know bombing you know neighborhoods and so on all these kinds of things uh cut people off from ex, ex uh, 
accessing, mm-hmm. their, their, you know, their needs, um, especially food and water needs. Um, so when, when our food is affected, it is an act of war, it's an act of violence. Um, so it's very much, you know, closely related uh, to what we do um, at the Peace Center. And um, so you have an ally here. All right. <laughs> we get the word out for you because, you know, we, you know, we understand how important it is. You know, I'm a, a, a urban homesteader myself and farmer, you know, urban farmer. And, um, you know, I work with other organizations and, um, you know, on with my other hats on. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, so, you know, so, you know, this is something I truly believe in as well. Um, and I hope that everyone, you know, would just, you know, listen and uh, call Jen up, go to the website, <laughs> uh, Lexington. Lexington.co. Uh, yeah. Get more information about double up your, uh, your food bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, and you also mentioned MAP, and I believe MAP is M-A-S-S dash ab dot org. Yeah, I think so. And yeah. I give you another history note. I used to, I worked for MAP for seven years. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. What a wonderful organization. Yeah. I mean, they just yeah. Just so that was, yeah, jobs in the community. Um, well, actually, an internship uh, with them, and I stayed with them for, you know, the next <laughs> six years. Um, <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So I, you know, I wholeheartedly support what MAP is doing, and um, you know, they're teaching teenagers mm-hmm. um, about uh, local and international food systems, um, and why you know why that's so important, um, along with their community gardens, you know, as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, as many other organizations, you know, that's happening. Um, Freedom Gardens, you got to connect with Gail. I might have her on. Gail. For we'll see if I can get her. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, have her on so she can talk about Freedom Gardens and how it got started. And you know, it got started um, through, uh, partly through uh, listening to Leah Penniman. Um, ah, okay. Yeah, Leah Penniman uh, was our actual um, 2022 annual dinner speaker. And, you know, she's the co-founder of Soul Fire Farms uh, near Albany, New York, um, BIPOC Farm and Community. So this is it's all interconnected mm-hmm. and I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm excited. I'm hoping that the Peace Center can help bridge uh, different communities together that probably wouldn't, you know, wouldn't bridge together right. You know, right away. So hopefully we can be a part of that process. I would absolutely love that. I think that is a great idea. And I can I give a plug for one more organization? Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, I am also a, a volunteer with the Friends of Broderick Park. Yes. Um, and a, a little, it's not necessarily food focused, but it is community focused. And I think it's relevant to the conversation right now. Um, Friends of Broderick Park. If you don't know Broderick Park, they're at the uh, foot of Ferry. Um, and it is a an official, you know, nationally recognized historic landmark as a, you know, last stop on the Underground Railroad. And yes. uh, there is an Underground Railroad museum there. And uh, it is a fully volunteer, community-driven effort uh, to, you know, create a space at the park and uh that is available for people all around the city, visitors, residents, um, and it's it's been great. The last couple of uh, summers, we've had a series of events there called Healing by the Water. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of healing that our organi- that our community uh, needs, and we bring that to the waterfront to connect around food, uh, music. Um, mm-hmm. We have there's a lot of local businesses there. Um, and you know, it's all centered around, you know, this, this, this historically significant and sacred ground. Mm-hmm. And, um, the Lexington co-op is a sponsor. We'll be there again. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll be down there talking about double up food bucks. The series is in July and August, but, um, it really is, uh, coming together of a lot of organizations, you know, so there's, um, uh, you know, get co-op, uh, Western New York peacemakers, mm-hmm. 
you know, feed more might be down there too. There's a uh, Delavan Greater Community Center. There's a lot of people that come together. And that's another thing that I love about, you know, the community that we live in. It's all about working together. I love that, you know, our Women's March was there at, uh, it, we went from Niagara and I think Auburn to Broderick Park um, for our Women's March last year. Beautiful. Um, yeah, and, and, and we had the march literally the day after uh, the massacre, oh um, the Buffalo Massacre. And it was such a significant space of healing and renewal and reflection. And um, it was just perfect. And uh, it was just a, a, a space, you know, it was, it was, it was a, such an interesting space to um, connect in that way, being, you know, a part of our, of African-American history, a part of Buffalo's history, mm -hmm. um, and uh, being in a space, a healing space near the water, um, mm -hmm. having drums, you know, we had uh, traditional drums, our indigenous uh, friends uh, giving thanks, you know, in that space. And it was just a beautiful time. And so please support Friends of Broderick Park um, and go and see, go <laughs> and, and experience the space because it's been renovated. Yes. In, in, you know, in such a beautiful way. Um, and so as we close, I want to speak on our Women's March coming up this year. Um, we got a couple of things coming up. So our Women's March is March 26th. We'll be in downtown Buffalo. Uh, we're marching from Niagara Square to the uh, Central Library. And um, our programming will be in the library's auditorium. So you won't have to stand in the cold <laughs> to hear our speakers <laughs> and, our, and our performers. Um, you can be inside where it's warm. And uh, we invite, you know, organizations, you know, to come out as well, uh, maybe do some tabling in the, um, the, the foyer area, um, but that'll be March 26, March 26, downtown Buffalo. Go to our website, wnypeace.org, um, uh, to start to, you know, gather some more information. And, or if you'd like to speak, put it out there or perform for us, uh, and, and support of the Women's March, um, go to our website, wnypeace.org and so this year it's about uh environmental justice and women against violence um and how violence affects you know our environment it's affecting you know our you know families and so on so um i would love the co-op you know to continue to be a supporter of the peace center um as you have always been and we appreciate you um, appreciate you, Deidre. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for being on. I, you know, uh, this was this was a fun conversation, and um, yeah, you know, you'll be seeing you know more of Jen around town, or at least you know her team. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'll be out. Oh, I'll definitely be out. You'll see me. <laughs> yep, I'll probably bring my dog with me. I have a uh -huh. little set sound well, oh, <laughs> mini dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Be um, fun. But I, this has been such a great conversation. I really appreciate you having me and I, I can't wait to see, you know, what we can do together from here. <laughs> Most definitely. And we like to thank uh, Richard Wicca, um, our producer and uh, producer of Think Twice Radio. Um, and uh, of course, our friends at Buffalo State College, uh, 91.3 FM. And you have been listening to Talking Peace. And we have been talking peace in love. Thank you so much. So that's it, Jen. <laughs> You're off the hook. We're off the air? Okay. <laughs> well, we're still technically on the air, but oh. he'll, um, he'll uh, yeah, he'll, um, you know, clean it up for us. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Was that okay? It was wonderful. You did a great job. Great okay, job. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. I get nervous. Some, sometimes I go, sometimes I answer a question and I don't really know where I'm going with the answer. <laughs> it was great. Like I said, it's just, you know, a conversation, you know, okay. and when it's something that we, you know, care a lot about, you know, and, you know, we have, you know, we usually have more knowledge about it and it's just easy. It's an easy conversation, mm -hmm. you know, okay. uh, when we were passionate about what, you know, what we're, you know, talking okay. about. 
So, and I, I've seen, seen that right through, you know, you right in me. through? Yeah. Okay. Most definitely. All right. <laughs> most definitely. Most definitely. You wouldn't lie to me, would you? No. No. <laughs> no, you know, you know, it's nice to talk beforehand and, you know, yeah. so, you know, we are all are already used to, you know, connecting and, and, and vibing. So. Yeah. Okay. A little bit, you know. Oh my God. I just get really nervous. You know, me too. Yeah. Believe it or not, I still get, you know, nervous. Uh, and you do this all the time. I, <laughs> you know, yeah, I still have to, you know, kind of drum up the courage and, you know, <laughs> kind of make it happen. And I'm like, I got to do my research. Oh my gosh. You know, I try right. to do it beforehand if I can um, on things. So I get nervous every time. Okay. <laughs> So you. you're gonna send me the links. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So Richard's gonna share share the links okay. with me, and then I can, you know, I'll just forward them to you. How do you want me to send you the link? Oh, um, yeah, whenever you're ready, whenever you're, we're done. So I we mean, just. But I should I send it through Facebook? Should I send the link? Um, the way you did um before through text was good. Oh, so I'm gonna <laughs> send it to Deidre. Deidre's gonna send it to Jennifer. Yeah. Okay, no problem. I'll do it that way. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, thank you.